Hi, welcome back. This is chap chapter four still, and this is part six. And in this part, we're going to actually look at a handout lab that my class has, and where we're going to practice writing the names and formulas for ionic compounds and for molecular slash covalent compounds. So on this slide is just a summary of the differences between how you name them. Remember that you've got a metal and a non-metal. That's how you tell the difference between these two. You transfer electrons um, in ionic. You share electrons in covalent. Um, in binary, you do the first name, and so you do the metal name, and then the non-metal ends in IDE. In the covalent, the first name is going to be the least electronegative of the two, okay, and you remember that electronegativity is high and right, okay, so you look at that, fluorine would be the most electronegative, and so you look and see, okay, which of the two you're looking at is the least electronegative. Um, you are still going to end in IDE if it's binary in these, okay, but you're going to use those prefixes in the name for the covalent. Over here, the only time you ever use prefixes is in the hydrates, okay, but you do use the same prefixes, so that makes it a little bit easier. Remember, in ionics, you have polyatomics, which has special names, and then some things can have variable charges, so you're going to have to use those Roman numerals in parentheses if it's a transition or if it's one of those special ones that are multivalent. So um, I'm going to show you what the pages look like on this lab. You will have to print this off. Um, you're going to complete this entire thing and then you are going to um, scan it into a PDF and then upload it as an assignment and and it will there's a place for you to click on in your unit where it'll say you know lab six and then when you, you it's got the worksheet that you can print and then when you click on the lab six it's going to take you to that submission page and so remember that you can either scan it with a printer that has an all-in-one or you can take pictures of it and use notes to take pictures and then scan to PDF with notes on an iPhone or you can use um, one of the um, suggested free apps that I give you in help. Okay, so the way this works is you're going to have the, the positives are up here and the negatives are down the side. So we always write the positive one first. We always write the metal one first, okay? So the best way to do these, you know, some of you won't listen to me, but I'm just telling you, you'll get the most out of it if you, and don't forget to write your name on there, okay? Um, if you go down the rows, okay? So down the rows. So, um, so this one is Na and Cl. So this one is NaOH, and I know that that's a minus one and that's a plus one, so they're one to one. When I get to the PO4, I know Na is still a plus one, right? PO4 is a three minus. So how many sodiums do I have to have to get rid of that minus three? I have to have three of them, right? Because then 3 times 1 is a plus 3, and they have to be neutral. So that means I have to have 3 of the sodiums. Or, if you remember, if this is a plus 1 and that's a minus 3, I can also swap and drop, right? On the NaSO4, this is a 2 minus, this is a plus 1. So I'm going to take the 2 here, and the 1 goes there, which is understood, and so it's Na2SO4. Now, as you go down this row, you're going to see a pattern. NaCO3, this is a plus 1, this is a minus 2, so it's Na2CO3. With me? Now, this column here, those are your acids. Okay, so your acids are going to go, and, and you're going to have the, it's 
it's going to be very, since this is a plus one and this is a plus one, your formulas are going to be very similar to the sodium, except you can combine hydrogens at the beginning, okay, because they're acids. So they're kind of like a special thing, and I do talk about those in the introduction to this lab. So this is HCl. This one would be HOH, but how do we normally write that? You got two H's, H2O. You've got H and PO4. PO4 is 3 minus, so you're going to have H3PO4. Remember, ammonia is your only positive polyatomic, so you're still going to write it as one thing in H4. Cl there and it's a it's still a plus one in H four O H when you get to this one it looks kind of tricky N H four and then you got the P O four so N H four is a plus one and phosphate is a minus three so when we swap and drop the three is going to go there, but since it's a polyatomic, I got to put it in parentheses. Otherwise, you're going to say NH43, and you mean NH4, but I have three of them. NH4SO4. All right, I'm going to need, this is a two, this is a one, so I'm going to need two. And again, I have to put that in parentheses, so I'm not saying it's NH42, it's NH4, and there's two of them. All right, and so you're going to go and continue down doing this the same way. If you get to something and they have the same charge, or if it's something that will reduce, you do need to reduce them to the lowest whole number ratio. So, for example, when you've got... Um, 10 for sulfate, You've this is a plus 4, and this is a 2 minus, right? So if you swap and drop, you'd have, I'm just putting it in parentheses just to show you, I'm not, that doesn't normally have parentheses because it's not polyatomic, okay, 4. So notice I've got a 2 and a 4. So really, what you should tell me, since that's going to reduce, it's going to be SN. SO4 2 because I had to reduce that. So you're going to see that with iron and sulfate because they're both 2's. So you just have to reduce those to the um, lowest ratio. That's for ionics, right? Because we do we know this is ionic because we have a metal and a nonmetal. That's how I know. All right, so then on the next page of this, they're the same things, except this time you're going to write the names. So this was sodium chloride, and you can write like on top of each other if you don't have room. So this is going to be sodium hydroxide. How do I know that? That's a polyatomic. I can look that up, right? This one would be sodium phosphate because that's the name of the polyatomic all right and you just keep on going and I have a few of them named so you can kind of see how to go these are named differently these are acids you have to look at the acid rules from that table I gave you because this is hydrochloric acid This is water. <laughs> this is phosphoric acid. All right, so you're just going to have to look and, and so that you can see how the rules go. So do this one last because it doesn't follow along with the rules like we were doing before. Okay? 
So on the next page, it's similar to what we were doing, except there's a really important question here. And if you leave that question off, you're going to get five or ten points off the lab. Okay, that's it's a, it's a hurtful, hurtful thing because I'm asking you, if you were not told that these are ionic compounds, how would you know? And I've told you a bunch of times, and it has to do with metals and nonmetals. So make sure that you can answer this question. I ask it again when we get to the covalent compounds. But then all I want you to do is I want you to name these. Okay, sodium. So this is practice naming. And, I, and I'm telling you, don't look them up. Okay, number one, I'm going to know because there are names for some things that you're going to look up that don't follow our SI rules. And so I'll be able to tell immediately that you look stuff up. Try to name them first, okay? If you want to look and see if you were right, that's okay. I don't, I don't have a problem with that, all right? But you do need to make sure that you try it first. When you get down here, a clue that these might need the Roman numeral is you have more than one of them, okay? So you have an iron... Now you got to know what the charge is on the iron. You got one iron, so 1x equals 3, x equals 3. So you got iron 3 chloride. And then for this one, you've got iron 2 chloride. Okay, so make sure you look and you, so that you can figure out how you're naming those. And you can go back and look at the other video if you need to. Because I've been preparing you for this. Alright, then you get the molecular compounds. How do you know it's a molecular compound if I didn't tell you? Because it's what? Two nonmetals. That's right. Very good. These are the easy ones. Di, nitrogen, because these are covalent. What? Pen. And you can, you can drop that penta and just call it pentoxide. That's usually what people do. It's just easier. Instead of saying pentaoxide, you say pentoxide. Okay? I won't count it wrong, but... All right. Make sure that you name these, especially these, by the SI protocols like I've been giving you. Because these are a couple that I'm going to know you looked them up, okay? Remember, you don't have to do the mono at the beginning, right? You only have to do the mono in the if it's inside. So I don't have to put monocarbon, right? I just have to say carbon. But it, this, since I only have one oxygen, I do have to say monoxide. Carbon monoxide, okay? All right, and that's it for part six. So you should be able to go now and do some really great practice using that handout that I gave you.